There have been those who said Nigeria wouldn't be ready, but the national stadium in Abuja was looking good. The opening ceremony was underway, and 24 teams had come to West Africa for the 13th FIFA Under-17 World Cup. Nigeria met Germany to climax the opening day doubleheader. Of course, this tournament is very special to Nigerians. Back in 85, they became the very first champions, and their current holders too. But this is a rocky first match. The Germans are European champions, and they score first through Lennart T. Before half-time, they double the advantage. Doran Mustafi gets this one. And just after the break, the stadium gets even quieter. Mario Goetze puts Germany 3-0 ahead. But suddenly, the Nigerians remember where they are and why they're here. Okoro gets the penalty, and in the next seven minutes, Nigeria draw level. Final score, an epic. Nigeria 3, Germany 3. The history of the FIFA Under-17 World Cup is littered with landmarks. The Nigerians of 85 were the first African winners of any FIFA tournament. The Saudi champions of 89 were the first Arab winners. Teams like Burkina Faso and Oman have reached the last four. But unfortunately, there have sometimes been doubts raised concerning players' ages. In 1989, Nigeria were themselves found guilty of breaching the rules and banned from age limit tournaments for two years. But for some countries, there are plenty of reasons why guaranteeing ages presents issues. Abuja is the capital of Africa's largest nation. 155 million people are spread across the 37 states that make up the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And the Office of Vital Statistics has to try to keep up. Before Nigeria's independence in 1960, we had regional governments. And each region could make laws for our own uh, convenience. Bus registration was made. There were laws covering bus registration in each of the regions. Of course, uh, you know that when children are born anywhere, if you are born in a hospital, uh, parents crumble. And because there was no control on the certificates, certificates were issued by anybody where a birth occurred. And for those who could not obtain certificate for the places they were born, um, if they were not born in a hospital, for example, they could go to the hospital and say this child was born and obtain a certificate for it. But government didn't have records of such certificates because the registration was not centralized. In 1992, for the very first time, proper procedures on the registration of births came into force, which ought to mean that the current squad should now have their paperwork in order. But the rules are still hard to enforce fully across such a vast and disparate nation. However, if the records of a number of countries are unreliable, perhaps science can help. There's now a method that can ascertain the true age of a player, magnetic resonance imaging. We believe it's the only way to balance the, the field, to level the playing field, so to speak. Uh, because, yes, there are countries where you can't rely on the credibility of their birth certificates. And therefore, what we have to done with the MRI test is to test the bones um, of, of, of the players, particularly the wrist. And we have placed MRI equipment at every venue, and we shall do random testing. Scans are taken of the wrist. This is because the bones in the wrist fuse at a uniform rate as a person grows older. As scans have become more reliable and detailed, it's now possible to tell a teenager's age with a margin of error of only six months. Nigeria conducted their own tests on players before the tournament and replaced a number of their training squad as a result. In the absence of reliable paperwork, MRI scans guarantee that the FIFA Under-17 World Cup is as fair as humanly possible. On the pitch, the late changes didn't harm the Nigerians at all. After that draw against Germany, they qualified easily from their group and then went on a roll in the knockout stages. First victims were Oceania qualifiers New Zealand. Five they put past them, with the final two coming from Sani Emmanuel on his way to an eventual Adidas Golden Ball Award as player of the tournament. In the quarters they met Korea, eventually dispatching them by three goals to one. Nigeria safely in the last four.
Colombia's path was anything but smooth. In the round of 16, they met Argentina. They were 2-1 down, missed a penalty, and then turned it around as Blanco and Jiménez scored twice in the last three minutes for a famous victory. Then it was Turkey in the quarters. This was an even closer call as it went to penalties. But the Colombians kept their heads, scoring five out of five. Shock semi-finalists? Well, that would be Switzerland. They'd never qualified for this tournament before, but put Brazil out at the group stage after a 1-0 win. Then they met Germany. It went to extra time before the natty triumph by the odd goal in seven. After beating Brazil and Germany, it was Italy's turn in the last eight. Ben Khalifa and Buff guided the Swiss to a 2-1 win. The last semi-finalists came from the match between Spain and Uruguay. Two goals from Borja put Spain 3-1 ahead shortly after half-time. But Uruguay hit back with Mesquida scoring after the assistants nod. With the scores tied at 3-3, it went to penalties, and this time Spain prevailed in the lottery. So that left four to meet up in a Lagos doubleheader. The hosts were to meet Spain, but first up, the surprising Swiss faced Colombia. This was a match largely decided in the 14th minute of play. That was when Santiago Arias handled the ball in his own area. He saw red and Nassim Ben Khalifa dispatched the penalty. From that moment on, the winners were always going to be the team wearing red. Four nil was the final score. That evening, Nigeria met Spain. It wasn't quite as comfortable, but an opening goal from Stanley Okoro, followed by two from Sammy Emmanuel, eased the host to a 3-1 win. That meant that for the sixth time, Nigeria would be contesting the FIFA Under-17 World Cup final. So in the end, Nigeria had managed to stage a successful tournament. And with Ghana having won the FIFA Under-20 World Cup in Egypt a few weeks back, this was the chance for Africa to complete an unprecedented double. By game time, the national stadium in Abuja was packed to its 60,000 capacity. Nigeria hosts, holders and now favourites to become the first four-time winners of the FIFA Under-17 World Cup took the game to their Swiss opponents. But the Swiss team held firm, and early in the second half, Haris Seferovic took advantage of some poor defending at a corner. The last half hour saw Nigeria attack with greater desperation, but when Okoro's effort failed to go in, somehow everyone knew this would not be Africa's night. The final score was Switzerland 1, Nigeria 0. So Switzerland, for the very first time, lift FIFA silverware. They are the under-17 champions of the world.